So I'm hoping for some historical thing here when I take this off. in and it's a Victorian chair and it has the original cake as we say the whole seat together with the, all the components uh, the burlap the springs the horse hair the edging it's called a cake and my goal is and I think this is gonna be a little different is I'm gonna try to surgically repair this uh, seat the seats everything on these chairs surgically repair them keeping as many of the original components as possible and working around uh, the stuff that's there. So we'll see. I, I'm really excited about this. I'm hoping that there's two things that this could be. It could be horsehair or it could be hay. If it's horsehair, I'm going to be happy. If it's hay, we'll have to start all over again. So the only way to find out is to start stripping it. And I want to show you guys how to do that. So let's get going. So let's get going on the cambric. Let's just rip the cambric off to see what's going on there. Wow, with this old webbing. And I bet it's not the original. And I see remnants of hay, which I don't, that's not a good sign to start off with. Okay, and this definitely has to be replaced. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you a way of, of um, repairing these springs from the bottom to start. That's how I'm going to start this project. Um, and all that is to see if we can keep as much as we can. But we know we can't keep this weather. I mean, this is this has served its life. I don't think it's the original because the chairs from 1860. I think this webbing's definitely not original. Probably been posted at least three times, maybe. So this is probably the third webbing, which is probably about 80, you know, 60 to 80 years ago. Look at that, though. Look at how that jute webbing lasts. So I'm just going to take my my side cutters. The side cutters are a great tool, you guys. Any hardware store. It's probably the only non-specialty tool that I that I have uh, in my repertoire. I think that you should go out and buy that they're also called the side cutters or wire cutters and make sure that you get a pair that's comfortable in your hand some of them have grips the grips have long fallen off this one but I actually like I like I have tape now on this I actually like um, th these so much that I've taped retaped them and retaped them time and time again they're my favorite tool in the shop and so sometimes you can actually take your hand if, if you're brave and rip the webbing like so so what I'm doing is ripping the webbing to try to, at the same time what happens is you loosen up those tacks. See how easy this is coming out? This is ready to, you know, this would be ready just to pop right through for the, you know, one time somebody will sit on it, it will go right through. And it was at that point. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, so we don't know what surprises we find in, in things, and I see some writing in there and some, an old burlap. Uh, it looks like they used a, an old burlap potato bag or something, but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Just going to grab my trash can. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is clip these. These are the old method of tying springs to webbing. They hand stitch them down. We could still show you things like that, but what we use is a clinch it. You've, you might have seen me use that in other, other videos. A clinch it is a specialized tool that, that uh, uses um, staples to put into the webbing around the rung and that's clinch it with a K, K-L-I-N-C-H it, clinch it. Okay, so I mean even the threads are rotten and old and ready to be replaced. It's amazing though how old this is, this job and it's lasted. Why you can't beat the jute webbing, folks. The, any replacement, actually, the nylon replacement is too good, actually, because it doesn't, it doesn't allow the seat to breathe, the springs to breathe. So just for fun, actually, another, another thing I like about older furniture, you never know what you're going to find. So what I found here is some writing. I'm not sure if I can read it. It's probably a sack company or something. Oh, there's a company, something down here. L, L. O T 
Oh, ING, hold on. Something company. But maybe after we take some of this out, we can we can read a little bit more. It'd be great to research something like that. Well, I'm making a determination to see. Sometimes the, the tops of the seats have been retied recently. Um, and you can uh, tie the bottom of the springs and web over that. And uh, I'm not going to have the opportunity to show you that on this because I'm making the determination that the tops twines are, are no longer useful either. So I'm going to have to take these springs out. So it's getting to be more of a restoration, a, a complete restoration, because I don't like the signs. I, I see a lot of hay in here. I don't like that either. It doesn't mean that there, there, there could be horse hair in some of the key components on top. We don't know yet. But I'm clip, clipping the twines. I'm getting rid of this. I'm not going to get rid of the spring. I'm going to keep the springs. We're going to do eight-way tie, put them back. You'll see that. It's going to be a longer process. It's going to be a longer video than we anticipated already. So it's going to be uh, a complete restoration, an upholstery restoration of Victorian chair. So let's just put these aside, the springs aside for a little while. And you know, we get to see the hollowed out seat. And let me see if I can read a little bit more. Looks like it's, I only see part of this, it's stitched here, so it's the lettering on this side is, is not, is gone, but anyhow, it's interesting to see. Um, so, uh, what we're going to do now is clean up the bottom. Um, you could take your little tool here, your little uh, tack remover, and sometimes what you can do is use the side to take these tacks up, but, but that's not going to allow that. It's like you're going to have to use a tapping motion and a lifting motion for most of these tacks. And, and what I'm doing is, if you notice, see these little taps that I'm doing are easing up. I, I don't want any to, to skim up that wood, right? So I'm being, I'm being really careful. And you know what? If you find yourself really hammering away at taking tacks or staples out, something's wrong. Because, you know, let the tool work for you. That means that. You know, if you've got two tools you're working, so a light tapping and a light and a lifting, it's, it's not usually shouldn't be a lot of hard hitting. And you shouldn't be using the, the, the ripping chisel or, or your tack remover exclusively. Always use it with your tack hammer. They're designed to be worked together. So I'm going to clean this up. So I've cleaned the bottom up really well, and now I'm going to turn it over. So far, uh, I'm not liking what I see as far as salvageable materials in this chair. I call this a farm chair sometimes because it looks like a lot of the materials were from the farm. Um, hay and, you know, probably handmade edge rolls. It's not to diminish the quality of the work. It's really good. Whoever did it really did a good job. But they, had, they only used the materials that were available. So, um, so I call it, most, most of the things I've found so far are unusable, except for the springs. I'll, I'll be able to reuse those. So now I'm curious to see what's going on at the top of this. So I'm going to take, I'm just going to pull the gimp off. I'm going to cut the gimp right here. I'm just going to pull the gimp off. I'll have to go back and clean that up. I'm going to take the fabric off. Sometimes, look what I'm doing, I'm ripping with my hands, at, you know, for, for all you aspiring hand models out there, I probably wouldn't do that, I'd probably use your side cutters. My hand modeling days are all over, they're behind me. As an upholsterer, you're going to find working every day with your hands, no matter what you're doing, your hands are going to take a beating. That, that's okay, it's part of, the, part of the tradition, I guess. Nice thing about tacks is they do come out easier than staples. That's the pleasurable part of stripping this piece. Plus, you know, I'm seeing things, interesting little tidbits on this chair. I'm 
I'm seeing, you know, this, think about it. That I'm starting to think now that this is the original. This is the original upholstery. Well, some of it is anyhow. So, for instance, I think that this cover is probably the third cover or the fourth cover that we put on it. But I think they kept going over this, which is the original. And I think that's what now, if you, if you focus in on that, Patrick, if you're really going close, you're going to see a little rusted, little rusted areas on these tacks, little rusted areas. Uh, that was a, an, a, that's a saliva from the upholsterer who spit tacks to put this in. So if we took the DNA, DNA out of that, maybe we'll find uh, some famous upholsterer um, who did this chair. Anyway. <laughs> So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to be as careful as I can take it. I'm going to try with this section first. I want to see what's going on underneath here. I want to see if there's any horse hair at all in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this. I'm going to pull the muslin off. Oh, okay. It's a little encouraged. I see some horse hair. So you never know until you actually start taking it off. So I'm just going to carefully bring this up. Oh, it's a combination horse hair and hay. Look at that. So let's just see what, what type of combination they did here. So they got a top layer of horse hair. Looks pretty good. Um, let's take the, all the muslin off. Let's break this off. Let's take all the muslin off. And see if we can keep, yeah, no. This is this is a uh, this is going to have to be thrown away. All of this is going to have to be thrown away. This is too. It, there's not enough horse hair for me to save, and there's more hay. It's like 90% hay and some mixed in with the horse hair. And I think this has done a good job for 100. Let's see, 1860, 1960, over 100, almost 150 years. I think it's time. It's time to say goodbye. That doesn't mean we're not going to restore it. Now look at this, almost like, it almost looks like a bird's nest stuck in there. You know what I think that is, folks? On another previous video, we used a piece of foam underneath the uh, other piece of foam that we put on, a bigger piece, a one-inch foam, and then a four-inch foam. I think they did the same thing with this. Isn't that interesting? Only they are using organic materials to do it. So they put this in. This was, this was tighter. They put this in in order to get a little crown. That's why you do that. That's interesting. So we learn. We learn. I, that's the first time I've seen that. And I tell you, folks, if you've been doing upholstery for you guys out there, you probably have found that each piece is so different. It's the signature of the person that did it, and this certainly is a signature. So, and, and again, I, I think not many materials out there. So we're gonna put that over there, and I want to show you something else that they did, which is interesting. They were really, the old upholsters really were frugal and they really tried to save and, but not their workmanship. Um, uh, not in their workmanship, but look at what they did here. They actually pieced a piece of burlap for the, to get the full seat and that's why we couldn't read all the writing on the bottom side. Um, that's to save money, you know, I think that's, that's not a bad idea if you can do it. Um, we don't know how lucky we are today have the suppliers that we have that supply this stuff. We, we buy it in, you know, in rolls, the burlap in big rolls, and we don't have to do that so much. Okay, so now what I want to do, so we're down left, we're left with our edge roll, and I'm going to try to preserve the edge roll. I'm going to save it, I know I'm going to save it, um, and I'm going to make the decision as we go along, do I keep the edge roll, um, or do we get rid of the edge roll too? I want to try to save it, I'll tell you why. Do you see this double stitch here? Okay, and the, and the height of this. So this is higher than any edge roll you're going you're gonna to be able to purchase, okay, that's already made. So that's why I kind of like the idea of keeping this, but it's going to depend. I might repair it, uh, but it's going to depend on how this comes off and, you know, and what it's made out of. So, so now I think what I'm going to do is, is take these tacks out one at a time. I'm not going to try to rip that because I think I might save it, like I said. So we're going to take all these out all the way around.
So I wanted to show you guys something. So I'm using my, my regular tack remover, which is a little smaller tool and a chisel. Okay, chisels can be used at some points. So I noticed I was just struggling a little bit with the small tool because the tacks were in there pretty good. So, which is another amazing thing. The tacks have been in there for uh, since 1860, and they're still in, they're still giving me a hard time getting out. So, um, chisels can be used in areas where you're not near wood, okay? And a heavier hammer. Remember, I, I already told you that light tapping is the best, but sometimes you can in certain areas like this. You can use the chisel, okay, as long as you're careful and you know, or a little bit, uh, a little bit more of a harder tool and a little harder hammering. Um, not hard of hearing, hard of hammering. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and then you can go back to your other tool in areas like this. So that's what I just wanted to show you. you know, so we've got some work to do now. See? Um, and removing all this rest of it. Sixty some odd years of wear and tear, and it's all just ashes, most of it, ashes to ashes, right? Back to the earth, which it came. We'll clean up project here, and then we'll show you what we're going to do next. The part of upholstery that I think is neat is the historical part, and I I think that this is very interesting. So when we were taking the chair apart, and we saw all this hay and burlap. Um, I think I mentioned that I call this a farm chair. So, well, then we found this with the writing on it, the burlap, and with the partial writing, we were able to do a little research and come up with the company. And I believe that this was upholstered either the chair was done in 1860 and was left as a frame for 40 years, or this is the second upholstering. But anyhow, either way, we, we actually found the company, which is pretty interesting. The name of the company where that burlap sack came from was the Ismert. Hinky Milling Company of Kansas City, Kansas. Uh, and and the, the person, uh, Theodore Ismay, Patrick's gonna post this off for everybody to read, but um, this is just that type of thing that you can get into with upholstering, um, the historical element. And what we're gonna do is give this back to the customer because there could be a connection, um, who knows, to this family that this, uh, this is, I'm not sure if this is an heirloom piece or not, but they would be thrilled, I know I would, if, if a little bit of my family history came back, like something like that. So wow, this has been a lot of work, much more work than we thought. And, and uh, for all you professionals out there, you might, you might uh, empathize with me. Sometimes you get a piece of furniture that you, you, you give a price on it, and it turns into more work. Uh, now I'm not one to go back to the client and say, listen, I underestimated the cost, therefore I want more money, I don't do that. It's up to us to evaluate the piece. So um, I wanted to show you that what's left of the seat really might be the edge roll. I'm still not 100% sure if I'm going to reuse them. I am going to keep them to see. And then the springs, that's it from that seat. And then that interesting bit of history we found was cool. But um, a lot of work, a lot of tack. So now I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to go to the outside back first. Now on backs, I, I'll talk as I'm stripping them. Um, you're going to find that the, the, the pressure, the, the, the amount of supplies used and the, and the usage on the back is much less than the seat. So oftentimes we can reuse the, we can reuse materials on the back, but let's just see who knows what we're going to find. You know what I am hoping to find? Uh, very occasionally, very rare, you'll find a signature on the muslin that, that maybe somebody who did this uh, previously, and um, that would be kind of cool. So I'm just going to take these edge rolls and put them over here for a minute. And then we're going to start stripping the outside back. I'm going to take the gimp off. Throw that in our trash can. Let's just see. Oh, I think I see something interesting here. Yeah, so there's another piece of fabric here. This is cool. 
this could be the original fabric. This looks like a fine silk, and I, that would that would really fit in with an original. Oh, this is cool. I love this. Look at this beautiful fabric. Wow. You can still get this fabric, something like this, but it's extremely expensive. I could tell you right now, I think this is a French silk. That is cool. I am going to keep that. That's just cool. It's too cool to, to tear off. I'm not going to... I am going to keep that. That's, for, that's another historical, um, you know, something historical that we want, we'll keep. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go over and take and remove, you know, I'm going to clean this up. And there's gimp tacks in there. Pretty much it's just the gimp tacks and some of the tacks from that material that I just pulled off. I'm, gonna, I'm running my finger. Notice this. It's nice to have callous fingers. Don't worry if you're pulled long enough, you will get them. Um, and running your finger along just tells you what, what needs to come up. If it's raising above the surface, mostly it's the gimp tacks. They have to come off and you'll be ready for your fabric. We, we may put uh, a half a layer of cotton in there over this. I won't glue it. I'll just put it, place it on there. That, that's pretty much it on that. Look at how much easier that was. And I think it's in really fine shape. So let's, let's go to the front. This was a real bonus. Well, we're finding some really interesting things in this. But now, looking at this uh, pattern here, notice how they don't have this matched. They don't have it centered. Here's a, ma here's a motif. And here's a motif. It's another motif up here. There's actually, well, this is the same motif. But the center of this motif is here, so you would think this would be over here. And the center of this motif is here, you would think that would be over here. But instead, you know, they might have used their judgment or maybe even input from the client, and they wanted to see both motifs. Who knows? But um, oftentimes the backs were, were kind of overlooked on these pieces. Another thing that's interesting is if you look up here, you can almost see old, old um, damage from being up against the wall. Oftentimes on these parlor chairs, these old Victorian uh, parlor chairs, they would put them up against the wall in order to support the back because the backs can be uh, easily damaged. Um, so that's interesting. So we're learning a lot, aren't we? Um, so it's beautiful grape, grape hand carved grape design up top. And kind of a simple, simple uh, carving here, but kind of nice. Curved arms. It's a really beautiful piece. Okay, let's take the. Let's take the. Uh, we're going to shield uh, our cameraman from these gimp tacks flying off. Do it by safety get goggles when you're doing this. If you don't wear glasses, even glasses, you know, you can get a tack going the side uh, out of full protection. But we do recommend goggles for all you people out there. Want all our subscribers to be safe, by the way. Please subscribe. Um, that's the way to keep us encouraged. That's, th that's what keeps us going with these videos. And as I mentioned on other videos, we're kind of excited to offer this. We're going to be offering these live classes on YouTube, which with with apprentice students, we, we were getting good feedback. But we're getting a lot of feedback from people that are saying, "I can learn a lot from other people learning with you." And look what look at this. Excuse me, I'm in mid sentence, but look at we got this beautiful silk on the inside. I'm really excited about this. I want to point something out about this. Now, this is a beautiful edge roll too that's in really good shape. So we're going to keep that. We are going to keep that. Why would we tear that off? No way. So I um, just want to point a couple of things out on this. So the upholsterer, um, he spit spitting tacks and um, this is a silk. Silk's a very difficult material to work even with staples but with tacks it's really hard. You can almost see the original pull marks that you have. So no upholsterer in the world can get rid of all these pull marks especially with tacks. So the materials that were used back then like original you know real silks and horsehair uh, fabrics they were more difficult to work. We're very lucky today that we have a wide variety of uh, fabrics. Okay, so I'm going to run my finger. I'm going to start at the top. That one just came out with my fingernail. I'm going to just run right along. Most of these tacks came out when I pulled that fabric off, which is kind of nice. It made up for the bottom, which was very difficult. It took a lot of time to strip the bottom. Uh, that's where all the labor is. Most of the labor is in the upholstery is in the bottom. It's the seat. And believe it or not, that's all I'm going to do. That's stripped. 
So, you know, just think this chair with the original material and the age of the chair, the frame, 1860, you know, you're thinking um, Abraham Lincoln's first year in office, you're thinking that we found out that this was in the Wild West, really, and uh, perhaps over a saloon in one of the rooms, and uh, who knows, you know, we're looking at some of this damage on the back here. You know, maybe some cowboys uh, was uh, shooting tiger practice on this. I don't know. I guess it, uh, I, or with a small caliber gun, maybe. But maybe some cowboy was irate. He made a couple of too many drinks and, and hit this up against the wall over the saloon. I don't know. But you know, it's nice thinking about these things. And then, the, and then you know, you think about the rough frontier in Kansas City, and you know, one of those boarding houses maybe. And then the fine, you know, silk that was used from France, you know, two, two opposite ends, isn't it? But um, working with one another, you know, that's what it's all about, I guess. And I, I love thinking about things like that when I'm upholstering, a lot of times it's long hours. So people say, how can you work such long hours by yourself? You know, well, you know, things like this, you know, you, and then you go online and research. We're gonna post that information about that, that burlap sack that we found inside the chair too. So. Hopefully you'll enjoy this video. I'm certainly enjoying tearing this apart and learning a little bit about history. So hopefully uh, next time you see me, we're gonna start the building process on this. So thanks, see you next time. So I'm hoping for some historical thing here when I take this off. Who knows, maybe a signature. Oh, it's a fine silk in it. Wait a minute. Upholstery on Broadway? Telephone 978-460. How did my business card Get in a chair from 1860.